It is the winter of 275 BC. Apollinaris was leading his army of inexperienced and undrilled native Libyans into Nasamona's territory. While crossing the Dune Sea, he was met by a minor hostile resistance force similar to his own units. The only difference being Apollinaris and his bodyguards were the only ones on horseback. It gave him a speed advantage which he would use to outflank the enemy forces, pinned down by his own Libyan men. Once engaged, he would crash into the rear of his enemies, causing massive casualties on the Nastamones. However, their incredible skills with the spear made it almost impossible to disengage without losses. Not only that, but the low morale of his own troops was so horrendous, the side Apollonaris wasn't at would waver, leading to breaking. Despite the archers being highly effective in their shooting, they weren't able to escape the approaching Nasamona's forces and had to wield their knives for close quarter combat. Despite all this, Apollinaris was determined to secure a victory and thus ordered an impressive strike on the enemy commander. Seeing the balance of power shifting in favor of the Egyptians again, the once broken Libyan forces returned to seal the deal. This was a close victory that somehow led to the survival of the Egyptian general. But with casualties at this level, he would just bring back any captured enemies with him back home. Unable to take his intended target in Ojila, this was considered a shameful display. Something that would hurt his reputation for the rest of his life. Further inland, Ptolemy II was closing in on Ammonium, but with a local rebellion requiring his attention too, it meant that the Nasamones invaders would slip away. At least Lysandras had passed the Ospolis, meaning that some form of resistance was present. Not the worst situation in the world. He would bolster his numbers with cavalry to improve his chances of success quickly enough for him to return south to Ethiopia. Without any Egyptian presence down there, the Medewi will surely overwhelm the other locals. In Egypt proper, the governors seemed to prove quite effective. It had taken longer than expected, but now their bureaucratic abilities could finally shine through as city governors, raising our income by 600 gold alone. An incredible improvement, desperately needed by the warring nation. We could at last lower the taxes back down to normal, which was greatly appreciated by our citizens. And after some questionable embezzling by the queen, a statesman was enlisted in Phoenicia to secure public order, which had been a moderate concern ever since the Seleucids invaded. After the rebellion was silenced, Ptolemy taught his warriors how to defend from the front line and keep the peace, something he deemed they would need against the Nasamonids. However, once he reached the Ammonium, their massive raiding party was nowhere to be seen. Speculations went on them most likely eyeing up Memphis, but no. In reality, it was Lysandras and his reinforcing army that was their target. Massively outnumbered, everything seemed useless. But if they failed here, Memphis would surely be destroyed. No way we could accept that. We decided to hide a few units in the forest while the main army would stay in the open, luring in the terrifying enemy. But as the ambushing group got discovered due to the extreme width of the Nasamones army, our cavalry tried to make them focus on the center by running across the field. The true effect of this was unknown, but some expect the hostiles entered the range for archers because of this. A lengthy struggle broke out regarding who had the better accuracy. Seeing the dominant marksmanship from the Egyptians, the Nasamones commander Oselkis tried to inspire his men with his presence. 
However, this backfired with him entering the line of fire, getting shot in the process. Without the leader, the unorganized army rushed straight into all pikemen, allowing the Santris and his cavalry to flank around and perform countless rear charges. As the Egyptian cavalry dwindled away and the arrow supplies drained, the archers were needed to flank around to help encircle the enemy units. They weren't meant to kill them or anything, but rather to break their morale and send them back home again. It was a lengthy battle with dozens of casualties, enough to even rival Paris himself. But the resolve and determination to defend our homeland made sure no Egyptians lost faith. The Ethiopians did, but so be it. To the surprise of many, the Sandras had pulled it off and won the day. A major morale boost for the entire country. The Nasamones might have proven to be quite a mouthful, but as an heir of Alexander, they had no idea who they were up against. There was a common agreement between the Polemarchs on wiping out the hostile army. Yet with such a costly battle, Lysandros simply didn't have the numbers to perform such a task. He would seek reinforcements at Memphis. Ptolemy, however, made sure they had no possible way to escape by snatching away ammonium a feat that allowed him to further improve his archer regiments to become some of the finest in the known world. But as the west started to quiet down, the north awoke. Jason had reported of the sons of Ares marching into Egyptian protected lands. He would have to fortify Hierosolima to the dislike of the common folk. But because of our heavy investment into appeasing this region, and the exemption of taxes they managed for now. A heavy portion of our income from that month was spent on mercenaries to bolster our power. Clearly a wise decision as the city was besieged right after. Knowing that staying idle and waiting for the Seleucids to attack only would lead to the streets being filled with bodies, he marched out to meet them. Jason formed up in a forest near the area of which his reinforcements would approach from. Furthermore, he had already established a smaller ambush force composed of the Golic mercenaries and some local units in a forest further south. The extra units from the town would be used to widen their line in an attempt to appear overwhelming for the Seleucids, despite it in reality being the other way around. But as Jason managed to score an early kill on the enemy elite cavalry, and with him successfully being able to pull off the ambush on the other side, he swiftly destroyed the Seleucids, including their general, most likely making Antiochus himself shiver to his core. A decisive victory for the heroic Jason, making him a dreaded commander of men. 
no Seleucids would escape his justice. After our main defeat to Antiochus already, this was a nice change of pace, to give us more time to focus on our other fronts again. By showing God truly can bleed, the many oppressed Persian vassals rebelled. Surely this should occupy their attention for a long time. It didn't mean they would sign peace with us, but it is still progress. The Sandras wouldn't return to Ethiopia for a long time. Once more a rebellion had erupted in Libya, a task given to the successful commander due to Ptolemy being too occupied on reaching Ojila. If a simple commander couldn't perform such a task, surely the pharaoh should be enough. It is too bad really, as the Medewi had clearly gained the upper hand in the south, threatening our client state. It is only a matter of time before we are next. The rebels proved to be more than a challenge, devastating Lysandras and his retinue. Perhaps becoming a patron of the military might help him when he would increase his army size once again. Finally, having reached into Nasamana's lands, Ptolemy dismantled everything they had, burning their town so it could be seen for miles. Most of the gold earned from this was spent on our industrial sector in Egypt and by sending financial aid to the Blemi in the absence of our armies. Clearly, having misunderstood our message from the sacking of Ojila, the Igadi men, another major tribe of the desert and close friend to the Nasamones, declared war on us. Just as we thought the west was secured, war only breaks out further away from Alexandria. This just made it easier for the Nasamone remnants, who made Apollinarius the coward retreat from Ammonium, allowing it to fall once again. Having no clue of what our new foe possessed in terms of military strength, Ptolemy recruited the spy to grant some much needed knowledge and vision. After having dealt with a few more troublemakers, Lysandros returned to Alexandria where he would muster a lot more forces for his army. Yes, the Egyptian's economy was finally strong enough to actually sustain two major armies. He deserved the honor most of all. They would see combat soon enough, because the Nasamones had continued their aggressive approach and hunted Apollinaris, who hoped running away would work once more. Expecting this would happen, the Libyan tribe had laid an ambush behind them, slaughtering the entire legion. The commander died like his reputation, in shame. Lysandras would be the one to claim revenge. Another legion would be reinstated in Memphis to take over the place of the fallen ones. Despite him being both a coward and an idiot, he was still a nobleman. Thus we ordered the construction of a small pyramid in his honor. Our spy reported of two massive armies fielding elephants were approaching from the west. Without being able to replenish and already being in a vulnerable state, Ptolemy ordered a tactical retreat. He would also be the one to finish off the last Nasamonis forces. As feared, the Medewi had wiped out the Blemi, with Aksum falling not long after. Clearly, the Sandras had stayed absent for long enough. It will take time to get into position, but his presence is required down there. The void he was about to leave in Libya would be filled by Menesox and his newly mustered Greek army from Memphis. Ptolemy would stay in the northern regions of the province to deter piracy, which has rampant lately. He wanted to deal with them for good, but as we didn't have the economy to field a sizable fleet to deal with the pirates, the problem will only get worse. Expecting a Medewi incursion, the local governor of Theospolis raised a minor force to form somewhat a defense. We might have survived for now, but this... This is just the beginning.